Hello, my name is Manuel Vilma, and I would like to thank the organizers of the Team 22 conference for the opportunity to present this work done in collaboration with David Val and Francois Val on hyperthermia by low intensity focused ultrasound. By hyperthermia, we mean the heating of tissues to temperatures between 40 and 47 Celsius. It can trigger or accelerate chemical and cellular processes that turn it into an efficient adjuvant for drug delivery, radiosensitization, and treatment, among others. Typical hyperthermia temperatures can be reached in a variety of ways. Among these, heating by ultrasound waves provides a particularly interesting avenue for minimally invasive and cost-effective treatments. Ultrasound hyperthermia does not intend to produce substantial cell death directly, rather it acts as an adjuvant in processes that are activated only for a range of temperatures above the typical body ones, but well below ablation, which implies an important simplification of the required software and hardware. We present simulations of heating by low-intensity focused ultrasound aimed at modeling hyperthermia treatment of organs affected by cancer, particularly the prostate. Our innovation has been to favor the use of free and open source tools, combining them so as to achieve realistic representations of the relevant tissue layers, facilitating treatment and surgery planning. The studies were carried out with the objective of developing low-cost medical devices for use in low- and middle-income countries where prostate cancer is becoming more and more an issue of public concern. To achieve this, we have made use of the tools shown on the left, available to researchers in low- and middle-income countries to favor the emergence of local research initiatives. The main steps involved in the setup of the simulations are listed on the right. We will now see what each of these steps involves. The step one is about generating the 3D models of the relevant organs. The video shown here illustrates the segmentations performed to generate the models of the prostate and neighboring tissues. For these, we have used the 3D slicer image computing platform, a free, open source, and multi platform software package widely used for medical, biomedical, and related imaging. The images we submitted were obtained from a database publicly available in the Cancer Imaging Archive. The results of the segmentation are shown on the right, with the pelvic bone represented in green, the bladder in brown, the anus in beige, and the prostate in salmon. Step 2 is about the definition of the calculation grid, which implies a discretization of the volume where the media answers will be placed, a procedure known as voxelization and of the time steps involved in the time evolution calculation. Step 3 is about positioning and characterization of the sources. In the figure, we have a view of the simulated bowl transducer in blue, directed towards the prostate. The structure on the right depicts the skin layer, pelvic bone and prostate, all placed in their corresponding location. The frequency, phase and amplitude of the source signal can be controlled. Once we have a control of the geometries with their corresponding acoustic and thermal properties, we can perform pressure field computation, and this would be our step four. The left image here shows the acoustic pressure generated by the bowl when directed towards the prostate, represented by the red contours, ignoring the effect of layers other than the prostate. The right image shows the result for the same configuration by considering the skin and pelvic bone layers. The difference in the densities and absorption coefficients of the involved layers leads to non-trivial patterns in the acoustic field. Finally, step 5 leads to the bioheat calculation. The temperatures reached within the prostate, again represented by the red contours and the neighboring regions, can be seen in the picture. While the bowl's focal point is at the position of the prostate, the effect of other layers makes it challenging to deposit energy in a focused manner solely by means of the geometry of the transducer. This illustrates the importance of having realistic setups like the one stated in this work, as it allows physicians to customize target zones based on an actual representation of the procedure. In conclusion, by using a combination of open source packages, we have demonstrated the feasibility of simulating heat deposition in complex and novel biological geometries. In the setup presented in this work, the transducer position, size, frequency, focal length and shape can be changed to allow customized treatments by researchers based on what they are trying to achieve. 
The technical challenges traditionally involved in the simulation of complex geometric features has hindered the development of low-cost solutions for intra- and extracorporeal ultrasound treatment. Given the potential use of such solutions for non-invasive treatment of different diseases and for imaging, avenues leading to their development should be explored. We hope that the approach described in this work helps define a roadmap in this direction.